brilliant to start. Hello, hello. Yes, this is Mr. Matt Ball. I'm head of history at Bexley Heath Academy, and I have um, been asked to plan the lessons for uh, year 10 for the summer term. So I'm delighted about that. I really enjoy this being in history. I find it tremendously interesting, I've got to say. So we're in for a treat. So I've made you a lesson, and this video is really a video explainer of um, a second part of the lesson, but I'm also going to go through um, some parts of this lesson here. So in this lesson, you'll be dealing with the early threats to Elizabeth in 1558 when she ascended the throne. So this is only like this, really the second um, kind of lesson you would have done on, on Elizabeth, okay? So the learning inquiry is, uh, what? why did Elizabeth face threats to her reign in 1558? So um, I've got a Star Trek activity here, a do now, which you should have a good awareness of. I would expect you to have awareness of these historical faces and questions. Um, if you're stuck on them, ask your parents, Tudors, the Tudors are the most famous family um, that is studied on your, on your, well, in England, really. So I would expect if, if you don't know one of these answers, I mean, you could Google it or you can ask your parents. Anyway, once you've done that do now, you've got um, uh, an activity to do. So what were the early threats to Elizabeth? And really, I've written it down. I've kind of explained it here um, that you had a threat of invasion, a threat of religious civil war, you had Elizabeth's legitimacy and the fact she had no husband. Four threats. So I talk about those four threats and you'll see there's a video here. OK, so I want you to watch that. Now, you also see here that it says that there was a threat invasion. More information on the next slide about this, uh, this topic. So I'd just like to explain. France and Scotland were in an alliance. It was called the AUD Alliance, A-U-L-D, Alliance. And the reason that they're in there, because it was an anti-English alliance. They had encircled England. If you look at where France is here and you look at where Scotland is here, this alliance really encircles England between two enemy nations. Now, obviously, Scotland had a far smaller population than England, was always invaded by the English. So it made sense. But also, this is a religious alliance. It's a Catholic, got two principally Catholic countries at this time in 1558, which are surrounding a Protestant country. Scotland later becomes a Protestant uh, country. So France and Scotland, they really become the fall in England's side. So Mary of Guise was the regent of Scotland. So this means she ruled it like a king. And she ruled it for her daughter. And her daughter's really famous. Her daughter is Mary, Queen of Scots. And I always shorten this to M-Q-O-S. So the reason that Mary of Guise is such a threat is that she has 9,000 troops here. And as well as having a professional army, which would threaten the young Elizabeth, her daughter also has a very strong claim to the throne. And her daughter, Mary, Queen of Scots, at this point, is living in France and she's married to Francis II. Now, this makes Mary, Queen of Scots, very powerful. She's got a massive ally in the form of her husband and France. And this is an extreme threat to England. England's in a very precarious situation here, a Protestant country surrounded by two Catholic ones. So what does Elizabeth do? Well, she doesn't mess about. Despite the fact that Mary of Guise was trying to claim England for her daughter, and despite the fact there's 9,000 troops in here, in Leaf in Scotland, Elizabeth sends her troops to attack Leaf. Now, it's really a siege more than a battle. And if you watch a clip, which I've, which I've attached up here, you'll see it's attached up here. This, um, this link will show you that there was a battle scene. Now, obviously, a siege can be violent, but I don't think it was all over in one day. So uh, how did this siege go? Well, actually, it didn't go very well for Elizabeth. OK, she sent uh, troops to attack the French, but they didn't do very well. Now, one of the reasons for this is because the Catholic lords in the north, they didn't want to send their best men who were out on their farms um, to go and die fighting the, the French and Scottish. Uh, they, wanted, they, they didn't want to kill fellow Catholics. So they sent, in the main, not great stock, maybe young boys or more elderly men to go and fight. It wasn't really a professional army that went to face um, Mary of Guise's troops. However, the French troops in Scotland, in Scotland had to return to France because there was a, basically, 
a religious civil war between Catholics and Protestants in France. And this is a reoccurring theme um, in Elizabethan history, that Catholics and Protestants are in Europe are fighting each other. Now, just because France was a Catholic country, i.e. most of the people there were Catholic and had a Catholic um, monarch, it didn't mean that they weren't Protestants in the country who were rebelling against Catholic rule. And in England, it's the reverse situation. Most of the citizens of England are Protestant, but there's a Catholic north of England. So Elizabeth sends the troops to attack the, the French and the Scottish, and they don't do very well. But Mary of Guise dies. Now, there is a question in, in the Elizabethan film that Walsingham poisons her. Now, but that's just a historical rumour. It's not, there's no real basis to that. Um, it looks good as, as a plot device, but I can't find any proof. And I think Walsingham was even in France at the time anyway. So it would have been impossible for him to poison Mary of Guise, who was in Scotland. So because of this religious civil war in France, Mary, who would become Mary Queen of Scots, Mary Stuart, and her husband, Francis II, because of the death of, of um, Mary, Mary Stuart, Mary Queen of Scots' mother, they had to make peace. So they make peace in the Treaty of Edinburgh. So in that Treaty of Edinburgh, the future Mary Queen of Scots gives up her claim to the English throne. And so this threat is resolved. It is resolved. I think it's the really, in a way, it's the most complex early threat because you have an army right there, bang Elizabeth's doorstep. Elizabeth tries to defeat that French army, but really an element of chance, an element of what you might call blind luck comes in. There's a religious civil war. Those troops have to leave. And of course, Mary of Guise dies. So there's a lot of chance that comes, or a lot of luck, as you might call it, that comes to it comes in Elizabeth's um, really to a good fortune. Now, you might say, well, she just got lucky, but you have to take your opportunities. If history te teaches you one thing in life, you must take your opportunities. You can't climb to power. You can't be a great leader if you don't take opportunities. There's nothing wrong with being opportunistic in this uh, instance. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there. Okay? I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to stop presenting. I'm going to stop recording. And I hope you enjoyed this first lesson. And you should really be going to your checkout.